Hello and welcome to a new video about measurement. We're still talking about pressure measurement. Today we are talking about a method where we can or also calibrate our pressure gauges. Last time we talked about pressure gauges. Today we are talking about a dead pressure, a dead dead weight pressure gauge, yeah, or a dead weight pressure tester. Depends a little bit. Uh, well, how is this working? I want to show you. The basic principle is very simple, all right? So the basic prin principle looks like that, that you have uh, somewhere a piston. Yeah? And a cylinder. The piston is located inside a cylinder. This is very accurate. Yeah? Very, very accurate. Yeah? And the piston this piston has some sort of shell. Like that. Okay. So here we have some sort of shell. Why the shell, what the shell is good for, I'm going to explain. And here we have some part where we can staple weights on. So there are discs, weight discs, and you can put them on, you can pile them on their book, 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 one after the other. And here, here we have a certain area, yeah, A, and we apply a certain force okay, here from our weights. F. And if the area is highly accurate and the force is highly accurate, we can determine the pressure down here very accurate. All right. So this is the secret behind the state weight pressure gauges that we apply here. So usually this is manufactured. Uh, very as accurate as possible, okay? And then there is some calibration discs made. First one is a calibration. It's a calibration disc. Which is manufactured exactly for this device, okay? So you cannot put it to another device because then this inaccuracies of, of, of manufacturing here is calibrated by the disc and with this disc on you have a certain amount of pressure in the liquid. Here down there is the liquid. Okay. Here we have the liquid which we want to put into pressure. Okay. Or we want to, to know the pressure of this liquid. And then we can pile on also highly accurate manufactured discs yeah? and we try to balance this. Okay, what does mean balancing? So here we have then additional weight discs they come in different sizes and so on so we can balance uh, like like a scale uh, additional weight discs. Mm -hmm. So these are additional weight discs. Uh, and those determine the force which is applied to the liquid. And now what does it mean balance? Usually, usually we have here markings. Uh, so we have here, for instance, one marking, one marking, one marking, one marking, yeah, markings. Mm 
marking to show balancing. Okay. So this lower part of the shell must be within two markings or something like that. And then these are usually rings around the cylinder. Yeah. So this is how this looks. Yeah. So you have, if you are between those two rings, yeah, then you are fine. The measurement is valid. Check the, the, the weight you put on. Determine from the weight the force uh, and via the area. Of course, there are tables for that. Uh, so usually there, you know which area you have, you know which piston you have, and you know one disc is worth, I don't know, 0 0.1 bar. Put it on, put it off. And by varying this area, uh, we can achieve a wide range of pressure. Okay? There can be 10,000s of bars. Uh, no issue. Well, no issue, can be measured with these devices. And because these devices are manufactured very precisely, we have one issue. Yeah? So we have to prevent this from, from tilting, from canting. All right, this is why we, this thing here usually spins during measurement. So this is rotating so that it cannot tilt or cant and the whole weight is not somehow in friction here on the sidewalls. Yeah? Used the, the friction would reduce the the force applied to the to the liquid, uh, and so it needs to rotate. Yeah? Maybe I'll put this also during measuring. The direction is not really rotating. during measuring. Mm -hmm. Simply to prevent tilting. So this is a dead white pressure gauge. Huh? Then there is also testers yeah, where we have here then some hole. Hmm? We have here built in a cylinder it's just a principle sketch eh? not how it really looks and we have here also a piston and this piston is somehow with a screw and there is a handle here usually, so you have some. And with the change of the handle, if you turn this in, you can apply here pressure or if you turn it out, you can reduce pressure. And so you could balance this for different, different uh, pressures. All right. So here, this is all this liquid. Yeah. In a tester, it's a special liquid, which is usually provided by the manufacturer of this device and say only then it's calibrated and you have to pay this amount of money for a little silicon oil. <laughs> yeah. Doesn't really matter. Yeah? So you could apply here different pressures with this. Turn it in, turn it out. Yeah. And then there's usually also somewhere back here on the other side. Just make here. Here. There is applied the pressure gauge. Here is the pressure gauge. Gauge you want to calibrate. D 
this is how this looks like, more or less, uh, from principle. So you could look, you know, you could apply a pressure, you apply a force, you apply the pressure that this is balanced, then you know exactly how much pressure the liquid is in, and then you can have a look what is displayed by this pressure gauge, and then you know how accurate this pressure gauge is. Hmm? And then you could do this for different pressures, yeah, with different weights, different pressures, uh, and then you can easily check or make a calibration of, of a pressure gauge. Well, calibrate this. Huh? So this here, this here is the gauge to be calibrated. This is how this is working. Like I said, highly accurate, wide area. However, not very dynamic. You know, you have to put on weight. Really, this is not for dynamic measurement. This is for static measurement. This is for calibrating that weight pressure gauge. All right. Next time, we're going to talk about uh, different methods on how. I mean, it's nice that we all have those mechanical changes and so on. We talked about these pressure gauges, we talked about now this dead weight pressure gauge testers. Uh, it's nice that we have this mechanically solved. However, usually we need an electrical signal to process somewhere. Yeah? How can this be done? How is an how can the, those changes? The principle is pretty much the same. How can we determine? Uh, an electric signal from those things. This we are looking into in next video. Next video, uh, change or change to an electric signal. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.